good stuff. Hey everybody, welcome back to Windridge Vineyards. Roy here with another video tasting. Today we're going to be focusing on wines that will go well with your Easter or Passover dinner. So without further ado, let's jump right in and try our dry rosé. So this is made with all the red grapes that we grow. 75% comes from Chamberson. The other 25% is a Sagne bleed of our Bordeaux varietals. Um, so Sagne is a French word. It literally means to bleed or bleeding. Basically what we're doing in that process is right at the start of fermentation of our Bordeaux varietals, we're draining off just a little bit of that pale pink juice. Um, as a result, it concentrates the flavors and the tannins and the wine left over. That's why the 2018 encampment, which hopefully at this point everybody has tried, um, even though 2018 was a pretty wet, cold year, the encampment tastes delicious. It's really full, lots of dark fruit, really savory. That's because we concentrated it using the Sagne method. Now, with the little bit of juice that we bled off, that got added to the rosé. So it gives it a little bit more texture, a little bit more of an earthy, kind of savory quality to back up all the fruit that's in here. It's a little bit more creamy. Um, so let's get it on the nose. A Little bit of a mineral note in there. I'm definitely getting a lot of fruit. Strawberry, watermelon, almost think like a strawberry rhubarb pie. Same thing flavor-wise, lots of melon, definitely big time strawberry. There is this really refreshing acidity in there. It's not sweet, even though I know pink wine, oh, it has to be sweet. Not sweet at all. It's actually very crisp, very dry. Food-wise, um, we always had ham on Easter. That was always a family tradition for us. So ham would be great with this. Um, the salinity, the saltiness of the ham is gonna bring out all that really bright, luscious fruit. A good rule of thumb, by the way, with rosés, just think pink food with pink wine. So salmon, shrimp, ham, hot dogs, like that's kind of the dirty little secret of the wine world. Hot dogs and rosé, fantastic. Um, or you could do a roast chicken or any kind of roasted vegetables, kind of lighter food. So that's the rosé. Next up, we're going to try our 2017 Seneca, named for the Seneca Creek that runs right between two of our vineyard sites. Made from a blend of 71% Merlot, 29% Petit Verdot, and aged for 18 months in French oak. Really well balanced. Merlot gives you all that really nice, luscious, bright fruit. It's very soft. It gives you all the body. Um, Petit Verdot, on the other hand, is a very thick skin, very dark, small grape. So it gives you a lot of color, um, that dark, inky color you see there. That's all Petit Verdot. It also gives you a lot of tannins, so this wine definitely has a lot of grip to it, a lot of texture. It might stain your teeth a little bit purple with all that really nice color in there. Let's get in the nose. So again, cherry, plum, the classic Merlot, that little bit of spice in there. But then Petit Verdot, kind of fun. It gives you this kind of leathery, floral, spicy, savory, a um, little bit leathery, a little bit dusty. I always get made fun of when I say the wine smells like leather, but it genuinely does. So let's try it. Again, plum, cherry, spice. There is that kind of dusty, earthy, smoky character from the Petit Verdot. Tannins are definitely there. Um, if you have a decanter, I'd highly recommend it. Or if you want to let the bottle breathe for a little while, usually decanters are a lot faster. They get rid of any possible sediment in the bottle that may have occurred. Um, yeah, really great with your briskets, roast beef, anything a little bit more hearty, anything a little bit fuller. Last but not least, we're going to finish up with our old line port style dessert wine. Again, made from our Bordeaux varietals. Port style basically means um, that we started with really, really ripe grapes. Just got the fermentation started, just enough to get some color into the juice there. Um, and then we added in a bunch of basically neutral grape spirits, so like a really strong brandy. Most wine yeast is only active up to about 15% alcohol. After that, it just kind of settles out, stops fermenting. Um, so obviously adding in a bunch of liquor, essentially, stops the fermentation, uh, leaving you with a high residual sugar of about 11% and alcohol of 19.6%. So it is sweet very alcoholic. Um, we age it for about three years in oak barrels before release. 
So let's get it on the nose here. You definitely get that vanilla, chocolate, cinnamon spice. The oak is definitely coming through. There is some fruity chocolate stuff going on in there as well. Delicious, really sweet. Um, citrus peel, chocolate, hazelnut. It's almost like drinking a Tootsie Roll. Um, sweet, but never cloying, never really overwhelming. Um, pairing for this one is a lot of fun. Chocolate is kind of a classic port uh, pairing. With Easter tomorrow, um, this is the wine you drink when you are raiding your child's Easter basket. So I have a chocolate egg here, which I will now try with this. Mm. Delicious, really nice. Let's get some port and see how that tastes with it. Mmm, that chocolate is really good. That is heaven. With the port, you're gonna get a little bit more of a pruny raisin, all those nice chocolate notes coming through. But the fruit and the acidity, again, I always talk about acidity, is enough to cut through the sweetness of the chocolate, so it's never imbalanced. It's just one harmonious flavor. Whew. Great note to end on. Thank you, everybody. Have a great holiday weekend. Um, enjoy the sunshine. Hopefully we'll see you here as soon as we can. Take care.